We'll have to watch this one for a moment. And this a potential turn in events. With two minutes and 14 seconds remaining in this overtime period, he's assessed with that foul. It'll be the Americans to have the inbound in front of this Australian bench. And four against three. How will Chuck Aoki and the U.S. manage this possession? They've got Bond already wrapped up. And this is just tactics here from the U.S. Aoki goes across. And he's still wrapped up over there. The two low pointers for the Americans are right with them. Aoki has 21 goals. And they'll utilize just the timeout to make sure that everything is precise over at the scoring bench. And timeouts now for both the teams. I'm surprised that the Australians haven't called upon Warren again. I'm surprised that they haven't used him to try and disrupt the Americans a bit more. I know that Bond and Bat are the sort of players that do that naturally within their game. But what Warren was offering earlier, along with the pace, was just that physical, the, the battering ram element. He was really hitting the Americans hard. And for the period of play he was on, they actually really fell out their patterns of play. They, they stopped playing the game in the way the Americans wanted to do. It may just be worth them bringing him in for a bit of time, seeing what Warren can do. I doubt they would do that at this period of period in the game, though. Roddy Bat right in the mouth of this American defense. He gets away, though, and now they'll just track each other around. It'll be Bond to make this inbound. We are level, and now the Australians with control. It's Bat who gets into the opening. Aoki will have to stay with them. But Bond now has enough room in which to use the block that has been provided by Roddy Bat. And he'll score the 57th goal for Australia. His 21st today. He's gone well past his average in the tournament thus far. Superb team goal with the blocking from the Australian Nazar Dam as well. In there, making sure there was a path to the goal line for Australia. Wheeler is going to get over the line. Josh Wheeler bring it back to 57. There's no stopping the Americans at the moment from responding to the Australian efforts. And this is an interesting move from Gumbert to bring back Wheeler. He took him out in favor of Brewer, and also they brought in Pudabaugh. And into extra time, he's gone back to his older player, as this is another equipment timeout. It's Bond that's going to receive the attention now, as he's blown his left tire. But I see that those changes as potentially Coach Gumbert saying, I played my hand. It worked to a degree. Josh Brewer was having an effect on this game, but they didn't sneak over the line, literally didn't sneak over the line when it when they needed to do so. I think it's it's one up at the moment to Australia psychologically. I know obviously currently, well, the game won't be tied now because Riley Bat makes it 58-57. He may have there with that one forced the issue, and that could have been a gold medal ball right there. Because with the pressure on the Americans, Wheeler really needed to have caught Roddy Bat early in the backcourt. And he needs to be physical against him to give the Americans a chance. This sliding through like he's on those snowy roads in Minnesota. It will be Wheeler to take it over the top. He records it. And we are back level again with a minute and three seconds to go in the second overtime. Wheeler looked to delay, he looked to uh, use up time, and Hoki said, no, 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 get over the line, we need all the time we can get. He got him over quicker. Wheeler, with a slight error as far as, far as Chuck Aoki was concerned before taking the goal. It's lobbed out in front, the angle is good, and equally the speed in which it's been received, Riley Bat will set it down for the referee. He's put 27, and you see the howl that comes from him. Again, every goal he scores to take the lead in this overtime could be the gold medal ball. Aoki, comfortably across this line. There's a disparity of about eight seconds between the game and the scoring clock. They'll try to use the majority of it here, but they can't make a mistake. If they do, it's over. Wheeler, slowly, in this vice grip that the Australians are applying. They're turning the screw, and this is what's happening here. Aoki's in trouble. 
He's got the brakes on. He's not going to be able to call a timeout. He has just done it there. He's looking to his coach, and he's probably in as good a position as you want to be with your eyes looking right into the bench to make that call at exactly 15 seconds to go. Look at the coaching call, though. Brewer comes out, and Ioki loses his options. He loses that buzz that the USA had in the first uh, overtime period. I think that was a really bad call on the part of the USA coaching team. I think they gifted here Australia potentially the gold medal. I just can't see where Ioki is going to go from here. 15 seconds is all that's available for the United States to hold on. They were in exactly the same position at the end of the fourth period of play and they found a way with just under two seconds. Can they do a double dip of it? Or is it double trouble? Here comes Aoki. It's up to Melton. Melton's got Bond on him. Inside to Wheeler, but Wheeler has left the field of play. They call it against the Americans. He leaves the court before the ball's been received. Australia with the inbound inside of 3.6 seconds. They will play from in front of their own bench. It's up to Betts. Betts will take it across the line, and it's over. They will win the gold medal. Australia, the first team with back-to-back -back gold medals in the wheelchair rugby. And what a moment as they do it in extra time. The second period. Whoa! Gold medal glory for Australia. What a finish to that one. Riley Bat racing away, punched the ball away. The Americans took Josh Wheeler out. It meant they had to force the game. Wheeler couldn't get over there. He, well, he got his wheel over, but it was too early. He didn't have the ball in his hands. Wheeler will be gutted. But I have to say, I think the American coaching call backfired on them. Wheeler potentially was not the player to have in at that time over Josh Brewer. My goodness. We saw ourselves a classic in Rio as these two nations went blow for blow. And there you see it from Roddy Bat. He is looking injured potentially or just gasping for air. And I think maybe he just fell there at the end when the ball got ahead of him. He knew how much time was there. But the tactics, this game has been dubbed now combat chess with bumps and bruises and we never see these athletes show when they might have been hurt when they fall when they go the distance as they do their lungs burning their arms have got to be aching and they play five games at the best of their ability across five days and Roddy Bat right now looks as though he has a shoulder injury he will have to take some time to recover from that we're of course only assuming because of the grimacing on his face but a gold medal is worth that extra assertion it's if, in fact, he has done that. And look at the celebrations from the Australian coaching staff. This is their moment for glory. And look at Chris Bond pumping the heart and again pumping this crowd. The Brazilians have loved it. The Australians right behind this penalty box are being saluted as well. They are the best again. Riley, that really does look hurt. He's in well, floods of tears by the looks of things as well potentially that last plate where he ended up out the chair. The Americans, they'll be absolutely gutted to finish Silva after all that exertion, all that thought. It came down to the last few seconds, but it's the Australians who are the ones celebrating again. They've won the gold again. Bat and Bond were phenomenal throughout. They, they faltered at times. That lad Warren, what a performance from him. The youngster, but he didn't have long in the game. But the time he had, well, it made a significant impact to his team. This is Ryan Scott enjoying the moment already. And it has been that relationship with this crowd as the Americans will just listen. And it's such a privilege to be inside these coaching and player formations.
rather muted from the American players. The ritual in a time of defeat. And the response from the players, you can tell the pain and the comparison with Nazar, then look at his face. And Moore, absolutely delighted as he unfurls the Australian flag. These Paralympic Games really have been of the highest quality. These two teams taking it all the way. Josh Wheeler, well, he will feel emotion for weeks, for months, potentially for years to come about this game. He was there right at the last. He just couldn't quite get the ball over the line. Wheeler holding back the emotion, as you could see. And Dubberly. And he takes his moment in style. As there across the scoring in this game. Chris Bond with his best game of the tournament. He saves it for the last. With the scores today, he has officially 21 goals, and that was massive to run shotgun with Riley Bat. USA, just seven defensive fouls, turnovers. They were better than the Australians as well with just the eight. He's just getting three steals.